Hello, and welcome to TheArmorerStore.com. This segment is on the inspection, maintenance, repair, and how it works for the Sabre. The Sabre is probably the simplest of all the weapons to maintain and inspect. However, there are some things that you really need to be aware of. So, what we'll start with is all the parts of the weapon. The weapon does have a point, a blade, a guard, a connector, and a pommel nut. My last job when I was in the Army, I was director of the Army Aviation Programs, mostly which were for helicopters. Helicopters have a very important part, it's called the Jesus nut, which holds the rotors onto the helicopter. If you lose that, then you lose the airplane and probably the crew. The pommel nut does the same basic function. It holds the entire weapon together. So before we get started, let's talk about this particular blade. As you can see, it's got some rather unique bends to it. The blade acts as a shock absorber for when you hit with the, t with the point. In other words, is it bends away like this. It should bend away from your opponent. This particular blade has what we call an S-bend in it, which it can hit, will put a double stress on the blade and cause it to break. There are several ways to take this bend out. You can either run it under your foot or you can use my preferred method, which is to take a crescent wrench <coughs> with an open end on it that you slip over the blade and you work back and forth on the bent parts, turning the blade to straighten and smooth out the curve. As the rules state, there must be one continuous straight curve for the blade. This one still needs a little bit of work right here. Notice where I put my thumb and then I put the edge of the, the crescent wrench on that particular point and where I bend it, squeezing the blade and the crescent wrench together below where I want it. It's a little bit more bend than I want, so I'll bend it back the other way. There, a nice smooth continuous curve from tip to the, to the tang. There is a limit on how much a blade can be bent. And for, an, for a saber, it is four centimeters. The way that is measured is by putting the blade on the table with the tip up and a four centimeter block should not pass underneath it. So this has too much bend in it. So we'll go back towards the middle of the blade. I'll take some of that out. And we'll remeasure. Still takes a little bit more. As you can see, this is an iterative process. And there, it won't pass underneath the tip. The other thing that you want to check for on a saber blade is the thickness of the blade just below the tip. It should be greater than 1.2 millimeters. The way you test that is that the gauges that will come will have a slot. The blade should not fit inside the smallest 1.2 millimeter slot. If it does, then it's too thin and that blade should not be used because it will break. The other two measurements that you need to do is to make sure that it is greater than 4 millimeters wide and less than 6 millimeters in diameter. To put the blade together, we put it in our vise. We take the guard, which needs to be painted on the inside with non-conductive surface and also have a rubber coating on the back side of the, of the handle that's anywhere from 7 to 8 centimeters long. Slip the guard over the blade. Take your connector. Now there are, these 
are two prong connectors. There is also a bayonet connector that is used. But what is unique about this connector versus its foil cousin is the fact that on the small socket, the one that has the three millimeter opening versus the four millimeter opening, is that this is electrically connected to the socket. In foil, there is an insulator between them. In Sabre, that's not the case because you have a continuous circuit going through at all times and because there's no wire. Take your socket, place it over the tang onto the guard, making sure that you do not have the thumb pad in between the guard and the, and the connector because you want con electrical connection between the two. Making sure also that you don't have painted area on the inside. Slide that over. Take your grip. Slide it on. Put the end of the guard over the tang. Now, you can take a flat washer and place it over the tip. This one happens to be serrated, so it will help maintain the uh, uh, grip between the pommel nut and the lock washer. Put one lock washer on, not two, not three, one, because the lock washer is designed to provide tension back to the uh, pommel nut and won't uh, allow it to back off. Put on your pommel nut. Tighten it down. Now, most pommel nuts use an inside hex, six millimeter hex wrench to tighten down. The problem that you have with this though is that if you have the tang too long, as you tighten it, it will tend to push the Allen wrench out. If you get into that situation, most pommel nuts have flats on either side where you can take a crescent wrench and use it to tighten up. Now, the problem I'm having with this one is, is that the pommel nuts need to be insulated. Sometimes you crack the insulation if you're not careful by doing that. The reason why these are insulated is so that you can't take the end of your weapon and ground it out against your lame and therefore uh, make it live and be able to be uh, scored on the blade. It's actually not a cheating aspect of it, but it's to prevent yourself from scoring against yourself. So, that is a completed Sabre. Okay, so now that we have an assembled Sabre, let's talk about how the system works. There are three lines in a the connector. There's the A line, the B line, and the C line. The A and the B line are generally used in the case of epes. B and C are used in foil and saber because the C is the ground. Now I like to use the analogy that electricity is basically like water. It wants to flow from the highest point down to the lowest. So if you are fencing and you have a continuous current, which this does, that goes from the B to the C line and is continuously flowing, that means this blade is electrified. There's a small amount of current running through it at all times. If you come against your opponent's weapon and you go to ground, the electricity doesn't see any difference from where it's already flowing, which is from the B line down to the C line. If when you hit your opponent's lame mask or glove cup, and that is connected through, his opponent, through your opponent's body cord through the A line, now the electricity is flowing in a different path, and that gives you the indication of a colored light on the scoring machine. If when you're fencing and you have intermittent white lights or a white light going off, you generally have a disconnect or a, or a, a loose uh, connection at the socket here, and that's meaning that the B and the C line connection is breaking at some point. So if you have that problem, check your body cord connection, uh, make sure the prongs are spread and they're making good contact, or you check your body cord to make sure that it's working properly. So that's Sabre, very simple to work on and maintain. Thank you and please visit our website at www.thearmorestore.com.